Greetings, lords and ladies. A short video today in comparison to the last two in the Ask America Anything series idea. You've been really uh, prompting us to think a lot about a lot of stuff. There's these two questions that were on the India Connections subreddit that ended up being so deep that there really wasn't time to fit it into the 40 minute video. So I thought I'd just make a separate video. One of them was from Hemanth Pundit uh, regarding cross-cultural notions of home. And he also kind of references some differences in East and West when it comes to philosophy of living. And then also from Neo444 on the India Connection subreddit, asking some questions about the same kind of thing, the difference in the way of dealing with the world from East to West. So I kind of go into a lot of depth on those two things, and I didn't want to include them in the that long 40 minute video because I thought I'd just kind of get lost in the shuffle. These are the kinds of conversations I love to have. And so any feedback you have on this, uh, any ideas you have about some of what I'm saying here or my hypothesis, I'm not saying this is necessarily an accurate assessment, but I think there's just so much more to be mined from Indian philosophy and thought back through the years. And we'll kind of get into that in a little bit. Um, and then also just my ideas about what it means to set up a home in another culture. I think uh, there's a lot to be thought through there as well. Would love to hear your feedback on some of these questions. And thank you for the great questions from Hemant and Neo444. It's uh, really got me thinking and uh, I, lo I love talking about this stuff. I would love to get your perspective on what, what makes a home. When you moved to India and we're dealing with cultural stress, what makes what made you feel home? Presumably American things, food, TV, etc. And the same goes for now that you're in America having, after having lived in India. Now what makes you feel like home? Indian things, food, films. Do you think there are things that are cross-cultural, meta-cultural that make a home? Maybe this home is related to the sentiment of being connected to the life you lived. Something you mentioned. That you know, was a really deep it's question. It's really good. Like, it's, I might need to think about that. Oh, I forgot to mention Hemant Pandit. Thank you. This is a great series of questions. First of all, when I was in India, you know, we would talk to people who said, you know, uh, expats from America who said, you know, just do what you can to get by. Like that means Skype or, you know, getting an international satellite subscription where you can watch American football if that was something that made you feel at home. Um, I actually felt like getting out made me feel more at home because what ends up happening is you, you kind of make yourself make a cantonment where uh, you end up importing your culture and then you just you just live inside that little bubble and then you go out and it, it's basically like you're you're never fully acclimating to the new culture and so it's almost like you're in a diving bell and you're you're taking these little dives out to the culture and you come back and you're like, oh, okay and so I I found that not so helpful I felt like immersion uh, as much as possible was the best way. And the best way I found to do that was the things that made me feel at home, whether it be video games or uh, movies, uh, music, was to get out and find other Indians who were doing those things or watching those things or playing those things and then, and then integrate, then experience it with them. Um, so that's, I feel like, the best way to do it because, you know, they in cross-cultural communication, they call it per, being a participant, participant observer. I think you actually have to go beyond that so that you're not just there as a journalist or as an anthropologist. You have to just become a person, you know? I mean, and you, you, you're you not just a participant who's observing, you're, you're a participant. And so I, I feel like the best way to really uh, set down roots is to make it home as opposed to, you know, having a home where you would retreat to. You know, I think that was part of the problem with colonialism is just it just imported a cult the the home culture and tried to rebuild it in that place and that just doesn't work i mean different local there's you know there's geographical differences there's weather differences there's uh cultural differences um, multifaceted cultural differences there's philosophical differences and so when you try to just import it into a new place you're never going to feel at home um so it's actually been difficult coming back to america because i don't feel at home here i still i feel like my the way I put it today to a friend was I kind of feel like my brain's halfway between India and America just kind of floating in the ether. And so you have to live culturally, locally. Um, and so, you know, I kind of think part of the goal of what we're trying to do now is to be able to live local and with an international mindset, you know, trying to um, uh, connect with somebody. You know, we're not the same but we can learn from each other and we can trade ideas and trade culture and trade music and movies and foods. And there are definitely certain things that are common to all people, you know, family and uh, friends and uh, the pursuit of something better. Um, 
you know, the transcendent, you know, the I, big ideas. So I think those things are probably the best things to tap into to feel at home. Um, thanks for answering my question in AAA2. I get what you mean. Surfing is kind of an all immersive thing and you felt like an avatar, alienated perhaps. I feel what you mean about being connected. The structure of society feels natural here in India and more constructed in the West. Not a criticism, as the constructed structures are often far more efficient, but may lack something fundamentally fulfilling. Uh, I think there's a truth to that. Um, and this is why I'm not a huge fan of materialism in a philosophical sense, thinking that reality is only what we see and only what we touch and only what we sense experience. Uh, I don't think the answer is in this sort of like hippie, new age, like, oh, oh, we're gonna be like Avatar the movie, you know, James Cameron's Avatar, we're all gonna go connect to the trees, man, and like, you know, we're just gonna commune with nature, dude, and we're not gonna have any technology. Like, I don't, I don't think it's that. I think there are many in India who are finding some answers to this, uh, this way to kind of do both. Um, I think there are people in the West that are finding it too. You know, there is this push in the hipster community all around the world, and I think it comes from a good place, this desire to have more, you know, connectedness to nature, more sustainability. I just think some of the applications of it, maybe revisiting problems from the past. I do, I think there's truth to what you're saying there. I think that uh, we shouldn't throw out all the traditions of the past. We need to learn from them. Some, some of that comes down to religion, to be honest. I think there's way too many people who are just throwing everything out from their own religious tradition uh, instead of going down deep and mining what's good about it. Like, none of us are Greek pagans anymore. I mean, maybe there's a few people on earth that are. But, I mean, you go and watch any comic book movie today, they are referencing some of the struggles that were depicted in Greek drama and comedy from 2,600 years ago. Some of these same questions about what it means to be a hero, what it means to self-sacrifice, what it means to live a good life. Like, those Greek tragedies and plays were talking about this stuff, and they are using gods to do it. Well, now we're doing superheroes to do this. And so, I mean, a lot of this stuff is just remining what was already has already been discussed. And so... You know, the West had a renaissance where we went back and looked at some of this great philosophy and theology and uh, research and, and, and science uh, and art and music, all this stuff from the past. And I think it, people claim that there's already been a Hindu renaissance. I, I, don't, I don't think it's complete. I think there's a Hindu renaissance waiting to happen uh, that there's just some credible mountain of texts that are in the Hindu tradition that I don't even think the whole world knows about, you know. Uh, we kind of get, especially in the West, we get this kind of pastiche of, uh, you know, this new age reduction of what Hinduism is actually about. Um, so anyways, that's my long answer to that. I think that, that India really does have something to offer here, and uh, and it's, you just have to keep digging. Well, that'll do it for this shorter, more concise version. It's still long, but uh, a little more focused. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, any thoughts, do let them let me know in the comments. Um, if you have any other uh, suggestions when it comes to uh, the Hindu religion or Indian philosophy in general, uh, any ideas in that score or what it means, uh, especially if you're in a cross-cultural situation, maybe you're an Indian living in America or in Europe or in Australia or some other place, uh, do let us know some things that have worked for you as far as bridging the gap, feeling at home in another place. Would love to hear some uh, conversation about that. You can post it in the India Connection subreddit. You can post it in the comments on YouTube. Uh, we will be doing a reaction to the Shashi Tharoor speech, uh, so we'll get to that. That'll be the next video, so it'll be either tomorrow or Friday for sure. So thank you for uh, putting up with a lot of really long-winded videos. Uh, I, I mean, we like doing it, and uh, it's it's been a good way for us to reconnect. We appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys are enjoying it too. All right, until next time, keep it creative, cross-cultural, and constructive, lords and ladies. Thank you very much.